<laughs> is that a minute, bro? <laughs> <laughs> like, this is Great Valley water. Buy yours today. Hey, well, thanks so much for joining. Oh, sorry. Nah, you're good, bro. You're good. That's the freaking color wheel again. <laughs> it's the color wheel of death. Yes. Bro. What you gonna do? I'm not touching you. I'm not touching you. I'm not touching you. I'm not I'm not touch I'm not touching you. I'm not touching you. Hey. Why don't you just hold it down? Tough time never lasts. Only tough people last. Welcome back to this week's online experience. I'm Alexandra. And I'm Sarah. And these are your announcements. So starting tomorrow with Thursday, we have Haha ha Jueves, where we have a bunch of memes lined up for you guys ready to like, comment, and share. And we on Friday, we have Connect Cruise. And if you want to be a part of our Connect Cruise family, all you have to do is DM 412 for the link. Yes. And on Saturday, we have vlog number 20 going up on our Instagram, so make sure to check it out. And on Sunday, we have our Facebook and YouTube service live stream English at 10 a.m. and Spanish at 11.30 a.m. So make sure to check it out and tune in. And so with that being said, let's get ready to worship in spirit and in truth. I've carried a burden for too long on my own. I wasn't created to bear it alone. I hear your invitation to let it all go. I see it now. I'm laying it down And I know that I need you I run to the Father I fall into grace I'm done with the hiding No reason to wait My heart needs a surgeon My soul needs a friend So I run to the Father Again and again And again and again Oh Redemption, the price for my heart, and I don't have a context for that kind of love. I don't understand, I can't comprehend. All I know is I need you. I run to the Father, I fall into grace. Hiding, no reason away. My heart needs certain, my soul needs a friend. So I'll run to the Father again and again and again and again. Breath. 
My name is Mildred and I'm Andy and welcome back to the God Factor. This is part four and me and Andy are going to be having a conversation about grace and about forgiving ourselves and not being too hard on ourselves. With that being said, first off, we want to thank Pastor Alex for giving us the opportunity to um, get on here and to speak with you guys. Pastor Alex, Andy and I love you and we appreciate everything that you do for the ministry. Thank you so, 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 so much. Yes, sir. With that being said, the first question that I want to dive into is what does the Bible say about grace? Um, in researching that, I found Romans 6, 23 in the version NIV. And it says, for the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. The truth is that we've all sinned at one point or another, whether it was in kindergarten or in middle school or in high school or maybe in college or for any parents watching, maybe now. Um, whether it was in kindergarten when you stole um, a gum or a pencil eraser or whatever it was from your neighbor, whether it was watching something late at night that you weren't supposed to be watching, whether it was drugs, whether it was alcohol, whether it was sex before marriage, whatever the sin is in your life, you need to know today that the truth is that God has already, Jesus Christ has already died on the cross for that sin and you have been forgiven through the gift of salvation that comes with grace. And with that being said, regardless of whatever sin you've done, whether big or small, you have to confidently know today and put your trust in Jesus Christ that he has already forgiven you. With that being said, I want to go over to Ephesians 2, 8 through 9 in the version NIV. We're reading NIV or at least I'm reading from NIV um, throughout my part. So make sure that it is an NIV. And it says, For it is by grace you have been saved through faith. And this is not from yourselves. It is a gift of God, not by work, so that no one can boast. The thing they have to understand is that grace is a gift that is given through salvation. And grace, Andy, it's not... Um, something that you could earn it's not something that you could deserve it's not something that you can work towards and that jesus gives you when you're the perfect christian grace comes as soon as we accept the gift of salvation and i really believe that christians and that even myself even i have had a hard time accepting the gift of grace that god has given me because it's free and it's like crazy to think that someone that didn't even know you before that didn't you know that he that Jesus went on that cross and that he died for your sins without even, you know, being born. And he already paid the ultimate price. Mm -hmm. And I think that's why it's so hard for, you know, people to understand because it's free. You know, you, you don't, you don't earn it. You don't deserve it. And it's just, it's just given to you. And it's such an amazing and beautiful thing that Jesus Christ did for us. And with that being said, um, I find it so amazing what the Bible says about, um, what Christ does when we ask for forgiveness. And that takes us to Micah 7, 19. And it says, once again, you will have compassion on us. You will trample our sins under your feet and throw them into the depths of the ocean. I looked up the word trample because I've always heard this verse my entire life. You know, we've all heard it from our moms, um, from children's church, you know, um, the devotionals that our moms and readers when we were kids, whatever. You, We've all heard this verse. And if you haven't today, you're about to find out what Christ does when we ask for forgiveness. And it says, the word trample means to beat down with the feet, so as such to crush, to bruise, and to destroy. 
That is what Christ does when we ask for forgiveness. He gets our sin. He gets the heaviness of get. He gets the heaviness of it. He gets each and every single thing that we have done um, that is a sin, and he puts it under his feet. And with the weight, he crushes it. He destroys it, and he gets it, and he throws it into the deepest of the ocean. If Christ has done that, he himself that died for your own sins. If he did that, then me and you have the power and the authority to forget our past, to forget the the sin, to forget the wrongdoings that we have done. And we are able to look back and completely forget about it because it's not of us. And the truth today is that God paid a debt that he didn't owe because we owed a debt that we couldn't pay. Um, and with that being said, a lot of us, what happens is that we start believing the lies that Satan throws at us. In John 8, 44, it says that Satan is the father of lies and that he hates the truth. Um, and a lot of the lies can sound like, I don't know if you've ever had these thoughts. I'm sure everybody has had these thoughts. And if you haven't, I don't know what, what world you're living in. I don't know, but God bless you. Because of me as a Christian, um, as a believer, I've even had these, these thoughts, you know, every single day of you're not worthy of nothing of God's grace. You know, forgiveness isn't for you because you've done way too many things. You know, you're the only one who's been dealing with the sin. Mm -hmm. You're literally the only one. Yeah. You know, the enemy makes us believe these thoughts and he makes you think, you know, you can't deserve God's grace because what you did was too, it, it was too much, children. It was too much, Andy. It was too much, whoever is watching. He makes you think these lies and these are lies and we have to call it what it is. It's a lie from the enemy and what he hates is the truth and in the truth, in the word of God, it says that he died on the cross for our sins and with the death on the cross that he gave and the resurrection, we were able to receive salvation and through that salvation, me and you are able to receive the love and the grace that God has us today. So stop living you know, in that fear and in that unforgiveness, because many times we think, you know, that the enemy has us in a trap and that the enemy, you know, that he has us in, um, in this cage or whatever, and that, you know, it's him. And many of the times, can I tell you something? Many of the times we have ourselves in those things. It's not even the devil anymore because we've made his job so easy that you are the only one who is keeping yourself in your past. Can I tell you something? Many times God is waiting for you to get up from your past and to walk towards your future. God has given you um, the power and the authority to do that. So do it today. And I don't know if you guys have ever dealt with unforgiveness or with being too harsh on yourselves for a mistake that you made such a long time ago. But if you know that, you know that it can bring heaviness and it can make you tired when you're hanging that around. And I'm actually really glad that you bring that up because I don't know if it's ever happened to you that, you know, God's called you to do something big or God says, you know what, like, you're the head and not the tail. You're, you're a holy nation. You're a holy priesthood. You're my hidden treasure. And yet you just feel unworthy of God's love. Yep. You think, you know what? Like, yeah, God, I understand. Like, the that that Bible, that thing that I'm reading, that's for someone else. That's not for me. Like, the promises you're giving to other people, that's for someone else and not for me. And, you know, honestly, Mildred, something sad. Sometimes what happens is that we accept the... The lies that the enemy tells us that, you know what, like, yep. you're not good enough. Like, God doesn't, have, like, God loves everyone except you. And, like, unforgiveness is this, like, it's it's almost like a wrestling match. Yep. Be because you're trying to think, like, okay, you know what, God, like, you're calling me into something greater, but I can't get back what I did from last week. Mm -hmm. And, you know, like, God, like, I know, I know that your word says, and I know, I believe you at your word, but I just can't come to forgive myself. And honestly, like Mildred just said right now, that sometimes you're just making it so much easier for the devil to keep you in captivity, to keep you from your destiny, just because you don't want to forgive yourself. And I think it's crazy. It says here in Psalms that when you mess up and you ask for forgiveness, God sends your sins from east as far as from the west. Amen. And so, like, I think it's amazing. That the God that created the heavens, the earth, created you, me, you. Like, he forgets. Yeah. He chooses to forget something. How is it that the almighty God can forget what you did either yesterday, a couple minutes ago, last week, a year ago? How come he chooses to forget what you did and yet we can't? How come so we good. can't unforgive ourselves? And how come we have to have this battle? And honestly, like, I don't know about you guys, but it gets really tiring in this battle, it gets really tiring in this wrestling match because you do it for a day, two days, three days, a week, a month. And then by the time you know, you've been doing it for years and you're, you're in this wrestling match with unforgiveness. Mm -hmm. And you know, 
the Bible also talks about these wrestling matches and what to do when you get tired of this, when you get sick and tired of being in captivity, when you get sick and tired of being, you know, just secluded to this one area that I can't get out of. I can't get out of my unforgiveness. And so if you guys want to read with me in Matthew chapter 11, verses 28 through 30, and I'm going to be reading in the Passion Translation, because if you know, you know. And it says here in verse 28, are you weary, carrying a heavy burden? Then come to me. I will refresh your life, for I am your oasis. Simply join your life with mine, learn my ways, and you'll discover that I'm gentle humble and easy to please. You will find refreshment and rest in me. For all that I require of you will be pleasant and easy to bear. I love that. I love that God, even though he understands that we're going through a situation, I love that even when he understands the, the mental warfare that we're going through, the spiritual warfare that we go through, he understands that we get tired. And God doesn't just say, you know what, get over it. I'm still good. You got to follow what I say. God says, no, no, no. You know what? That's okay. I understand that you're tired. Come to me. I'll give you rest. Come to me and I'll give you an oasis. When, when the world feels too hot for you, don't worry about it. I will give you an oasis for you to relax in. I will give you an oasis to refresh so your good. life. I love that about God, that he understands. He's not just a good God that died for me and said, okay, you know what? I already did my part. Now it's your turn. He says, you know what? I understand life can get hard. Yeah. I get it. I've been there. I love the fact that Jesus came down to this earth just so he can tell us, you know what? I understand what you're going through. Because if you notice, this is Jesus saying it. He says, you know what? I know what it's like to get tired. I know what it's like to get frustrated. I know what it's like to carry a heavy burden. I know what it's like. So just come to me. And this whole, the, these three verses, I love them because they, they give you uh, an example on how to for like you might not think you know what Andy what does it have to do with it for like forgiving yourself it doesn't have anything to do with it but we just said unforgiveness with yourself is such a wrestling match that you just need to get you get sick and tired of it you can't handle it anymore yep. and so God is here telling you with these three steps on how to leave your unforgiveness and step number one is come to Jesus it says here right in verse 28, are you weary and carrying a heavy burden? Then come to me. Sometimes you and I just have to humble ourselves and say, you know what, God, I can't do it. I can't do it anymore. Like I've been holding on this battle way too long. My shoulders are weak. My knees are shaking. Yeah. I can't do this anymore. But it, it honestly has to come from a place where you're, you're honest with God. That you, you always say like, no, I can do it. And no, like, it's okay. And I, I, I'm a boss and I can do it. And I can do all things through Christ. But then sometimes you just got to say like, you know, I just, I just can't. I'm too tired and I just can't. And that's when God says, hey, that's okay. I'm not expecting you to carry all this weight. I'm not expecting you to do this. Just come to me. So from right there, you need to understand that you need to humble yourself and say, hey, God, I need you. Number two, it's, he also says, simply join your life with mine. Yeah. Now that you accept, hey, you know what, God, I can't do it all together. God is only going to ask you one quick thing. All right, I understand that you can't handle it together. That's why I'm here. I'm not going to I'm not going to let you do this fight alone. I'm going to be here with you and I'm going to fight your battles. All I'm asking you is to align your life with mine. And yeah. you, you it says here you notice it. Learn my ways and you'll discover that I'm gentle, humble, easy to please and you will find refreshment and rest in me. Sometimes we think so much like I don't know if it ever happened to you in high school and middle school that people would like judge you like, oh, you're, you're a Christian, so you don't party. <laughs> yep. and so you don't do this and you don't do that. Like, you're so lame. And like, you realize that, oh, like, I get that. Like, I understand why you think it's so lame. That's what everybody's doing now. But don't think of it as a limitation. Think of it as saying, you know what? I'm not doing this because God doesn't want me to do it. And I don't want to break his heart. Yeah. And you start realizing that the stuff that the stuff that was limiting you back then, now you understand, oh, you know what? Like, maybe I'm doing this not because I'm looking for approval of others, but just because like God loves me and I love him too. And I just want to yeah. show him with my action. I want to show him with my body. I want to show him with my character. Exactly. God, I love you. And this is how you do it. Align your ways with him and know that he's gentle and he's easy to please. So he's beautiful. not asking a lot from you. He's not asking you to go up on the cross. He's just asking you, hey, come to me and follow me. And then he also says here, this is how he ends off the verse, which I love. For all that I require of you will be pleasant and easy to bear. Just know that you're like, you think, you know what, like following Christianity, like it's going to be hard. And I'm not going to lie to you. It sometimes gets hard. And by, the Bible promises you that this world will be hard. But he also promises you that, hey, in this world, you will have trials. But don't worry. I have overcome the world. 
And I love that, the fact that I can come to a guy, that I can come to Jesus, that I can come to love itself, and he already overcame the world for me. So I don't have to do it anymore. He's got it all covered. Right here he says, expect a light load. So what I love from that, what I love from that is that he already took my, he already took my sin. Mm -hmm. Everything that I'm stressing out about, he's already got it covered. All I have to do is just follow him. Yep. And it, you, like you were saying, it's so crazy how grace feel is, is, is so free. Mm -hmm. It feels wrong. Yep. Like, like now, like, you know what? Like maybe I should work for it. Maybe if I go to church every day, maybe if I invite friends to small groups, maybe like there's nothing you got to do. Nothing you got to do. You don't have, a, you don't need a perfect attendance at church. You don't need to give your tithing every single day. You, you don't, you don't have to have a, a no cussing record. <laughs> God loves you just the way you are right here, right now. There's no, like, again, we say it all time. There's no angels, no demons, no nothing that can separate you from the love of God. So right now, I want you guys to bow your heads and close your eyes. And I don't know if it's you guys, but sometimes we, we go through these battles every day. We go through these battles and we just can't take it anymore. We can't take the fact that I can't, I can't, I can't hold this to the wrestling match with me and unforgiveness anymore. God's giving me a gift and I'm not accepting it and I'm not opening it up. If this message was for you, I just want to encourage you guys to repeat this after me. Jesus, I accept that you died on the cross for me. I believe that you are the son of God and that you came back on the third day. And I confess that I'm a sinner, but I am made clean in your blood. Father, thank you because you have made me clean. In your name I pray. Amen and amen. Amen. Well, before 12, that is all we have for you today. That was the end of this amazing series called The God Factor. We are honestly so in love with this. We love the fact that God gives us grace each and every single day. We can't wait to see you next time. Laters. So that is the end of our service for this week. Thank you so much for tuning in. We pray that you guys received an amazing word. Don't forget to follow us on social media. We love you guys and we'll see you next week.